Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's review is the scenario Reverberations from A Night at the Opera for Delta Green the Role-Playing Game by Arc Dream Publishing. Ok, first a bit of history. Released in 2018, A Night at the Opera is a collection of five previously released standalone scenarios, Visid, Music from a Darkened Room, Extremophilia, The Star Chamber and Observer Effect, with the addition of a new introductory scenario, Reverberations. I've decided in this instance to review each scenario as a separate entity in order to not make the video too long and to devote extra attention to the details. Also, as I have previously reviewed the superb Visid, I will not be revisiting it here, although I will put a link below. OK, to the cover. Here we have a typically disturbing and appropriate piece by Dennis de Twiller, which definitely sets the tone for what follows. On to the inside. First up we have an introduction by Shane Ivey where he talks about the point of Delta Green and what the player should expect as well as giving some handy information on how to approach running these scenarios as a series including rough dates as to when they could be set. He recommends beginning with reverberations being set in May 2016 and finishing with Observer Effect in November 2018 as it is particularly cataclysmic. We then move on to the first, reverberations. Reverberations has been designed as a scenario to introduce players to the bleak world of Delta Green. It begins by telling us about a 90s rave drug called Reverb that is currently back on the streets and its users and dealers have been mysteriously vanishing. The agents have the task of identifying and stopping the source of the drug. The DEA is looking into a network of drug dealers and has found a disturbing pattern of mid-level employees or dealers disappearing without a trace with the common factor seeming to be a new hallucinogen called Reverb. Delta Green's interest is triggered when Reverb is mentioned as it was connected to the 1990s with the Cho Cho of Chicago. The drug doesn't just get people high, it exposes them to unnatural forces. The agent's job is simple, find out if the new reverb has unnatural effects, find the source and cut it off. They're also warned that no matter what, the cho-cho cannot be trusted. It discusses what assets the players have access to, then explains how the agents can find out about the cho-cho. We then move on to reverb. The agents can find out about the drug by talking to users of it. A nightclub called Studio Overground is given as a place to find a user, Ella Smith, who can explain that the drug gets you high and makes time stretch, so it feels like you're doing the same thing again and again, making things like dancing and sex better than ever. Another user they can interview is Damien Lucas, who, with a bit of persuading, can tell the agents that time is not only stretched, but can be missing entirely. Memories of days can be completely different and it can produce visions of strange places and people. If the agents research missing persons, they find a clear correlation between people with a history of experimental drug use and the turf of Reverb's dealers, and interviews with missing users, friends and family will confirm their use of the drug. They can also discover that in the case of one missing user, the room was smashed to pieces, almost like someone had taken a hammer to it, but with no traces of the hammer, no wood splinters, no metal shards, nothing. Also, no blood or traces of harm. Currently, Reverb isn't illegal, and if the agent managed to obtain some of it, they can run through lab analysis with the right skills. They find that it is mostly sugar with a small amount of MDMA and a trace of something unknown. It can be identified as possibly being a plant-based alkaloid that is a psychotrope that affects the hypothalamus. Also, examination of the brains of three or more users notices that the substance accumulates in the brain it does not dissolve. Next, it moves on to the Chocho. It gives us a table as to what the agents know depending on both their history and anthropology skills and also their unnatural. It also reprints a piece from the Handler's Guide about the Chocho, which discusses their frankly disturbing society. It gives details on obtaining an interview with people in the Chocho community who are insular and suspicious of outsiders. They can eventually get an interview with Trang Duk Bian, a retired doctor in her 60s. She is, unbeknownst to the players, a member of the Shukaran cult and a close associate of CAAA founder Cho Chu Sao. She seems friendly and inhospitable, but also canny and thorough. She secretly records her meetings with the agents. If the conversations go well, they discover that Reverb contains traces of a sacred black lotus called Liao. It is said to come from the Himalayas and has been considered holy to the Chocho for as long as anyone can remember. They consider it being mixed with MDMA to be sacrilegious and that consuming the wrong amount of it can lead to insanity. While discussing Reverb with the subject, a human score of 40% or more tells them that they feel they are being held back on. If the agents treated the idea of Liao with respect, they can find out that exploring Liao's revelations can attract hungry spirits. The Chocho use an old Sanskrit term, preta, but those with a Southeast Asian language of 60% or more can determine that the phrasing of the word implies that the spirit is not human. They can also discover that the preta can be diverted if one meditates on a void or a perfect sphere. 
Also, smoking a small dose of Liao and begging the forbearance of Shukaran the Hungry God may help. To find the source of Rebirth, the players need to talk to the remaining dealers. This can lead them onto High Sally or Lucian Badaluk rigs. These, with the right kind of questioning and persuasion, can lead onto their supplier, Spider J. Spider J, or Jacob Silas Simmons, is a US Army veteran and former contractor of a heavily armed militarised security firm called Academy. He did two tours of Afghanistan and was initially court martialed for smuggling, but it was later dropped due to a lack of evidence and he was honourably discharged. Investigating Academy turns up dead ends unless they are ex military, in which case, with the right roles, they can find out that Simmons worked three assignments in Afghanistan but was suspected of being involved with drug smuggling. Spider J can be tracked down to a room in the Excelsior Hotel under his girlfriend's name. He has store-bought security cameras about the place, so well, unless caution is taken, not be taken by surprise. He's athletic, armed and violent. On the occasion that the agents visit him, however, he's in no state to cause a problem. He is glassy-eyed and his pipe indicates that he has dosed himself with Liao. The agents have approximately one hour to interview him before he reverts to form. If probed, Spider-J will tell him that she told him to take the Liao, although he can't remember any details of who she is. He gets the drug from his connections in Afghanistan. Cho Cho Elders controlled access to it previously, but he made sure that they were killed in a drone strike. He was also the one who added MDMA to it, and he is in possession of pure Liao that the streets are not ready for. Also, he did not tell his superiors that he was mixing MDMA with it, but he figured that he could make it popular. When they found out, however, they started scaring his dealers and eventually came for him. He is distressed to realise that he can't remember anything about the network above him. Observant agents that spot his surveillance equipment will also notice that his laptop is missing. This can be found in the alley behind the hotel, thrown from the window. Technical agents can recover the hard drive and footage can be viewed of an unknown Hispanic-looking woman in her 30s or 40s entering Spider-J's apartment. She is a sorceress skilled at manipulating people. She persuaded Spider to overdose on Liao, altered his memories and took the rest of his supply of Liao. As the agents questioned Spider, things start to become strange. He starts raving about things he has seen in the past. These can be things like a choice moment from Delta Green's history, a Mayan or Aztec pyramid bathed in blood, or even a reptilian creature standing in silk robes in some sort of laboratory with dinosaurs seen through the windows in the background. He then leaps too far back, and he can see energies pulsing, intersecting with malice. He becomes terrified at this point, and where two surfaces converge, he can see an evil coming out of the line where they met. He then realises with horror that the thing has sensed him and screams, Oh God, it's in my brain! At this point, a hound of the angles emerges from the corner of Spider's eyes and grows large, looming over him and the agents. The hound destroys Spider, shredding the space and time that his body inhabits. It will only attack the agents if they have taken Liao or interfere with it. If not, it destroys Spider, leaving a wrecked room, then vanishes taking him with it, leaving no trace of ever being there. The agents can stop this happening by rendering Spider unconscious or killing him, or they can escape, leaving the hound to do what it wants to do. If it is left to devour Spider, it becomes more attuned to this time and place and continues hunting reverb users. The agents can stop the how manifesting by meditating on a void or a perfect sphere as instructed by the Cho Cho, but the success of that is down to the fall of the dice. If the agents have taken a small dose of Liao, their chances of stopping it are increased. This is followed by the stats for typical NPCs that they meet, as well as the Hound of the Angles itself. Reverberations is, in some ways, an ideal introduction to the world of Delta Green. The reason for this is that the agents are not really supposed to fight the Hound, but realise that these kind of things exist beyond their ability to do anything about. It is meant to scare the players and cause sand loss, rather than having them chased down and eaten, and it gives a good insight into the foul Chocho. Parts of it are nicely fleshed out, but there are also parts of it that are lacking in a bit of detail. Things like Studio Overground would have benefited the scenario, as would more interaction with the Chocho, and it's a bit short and to the point, but in the grand scheme of things, this is unimportant. Reverberations makes a beginning to the pointless fight against the horrors of Delta Green. I give it a 7.5 out of 10. The next video in this series will be Visid, so until then, but out.